the promise. My domain gleams with sunlight when I wake to the sound of Stella's calls. Ivan, Stella says in a hoarse whisper, Ivan, I'm here, Stella. I sit up abruptly and Bob topples off my stomach. I run to a window. I can see Ruby next to Stella, sleeping soundly. Ivan, I want you to promise me something, Stella says. Anything, I say. I've never asked for a promise before because promises are forever and forever is an unusually long time, especially when you're in a cage. Domain, I correct. Domain, she agrees. I straighten to my full height. I promise Stella, I say in a voice like my father's, but you haven't even heard what I'm asking yet, she says, and she closes her eyes for a moment. Her great chest shudders. I promise anyway. Stella doesn't say anything for a long time. Never mind, she finally says. I don't know what I was thinking. The pain is making me addled. Ruby stirs, her trunk moves, as if she's reaching for something that isn't there. When I say words, they surprise me. You want me to take care of Ruby? Stella nods, a small gesture that makes her wince. If she could have a life that's different from mine, she needs a safe place, Ivan. Not, not here, I say. It would be easier to promise to stop eating, to stop breathing, to stop being a gorilla. I promise, Stella, I say, I promise, on my word, on a silverback. Before Mac, before Bob, even before Ruby, I know that Stella is gone. I know it the way he knows summer's over and winter's on the way. I just know. Stella once teased me that elephants are superior because they feel more joy and grief than apes. Your gorilla hearts are made of ice, Ivan, she said, her eyes glittering. Ours are made of fire. Right now, I would give all the yogurt raisins in the world for a heart made of ice. Barb heard from a rat, a reliable source, that they tossed Stella's body into a garbage truck. It took five men and a forklift. All day, I try to comfort Ruby, but what can I say? That Stella had a good and happy life, that she lived as she was meant to live, that she died with those who loved her most nearby. At least the last is true. Joya cries all evening while her father sweeps and mops and dusts and cleans the toilets. When George sees Mac, he runs to him. I can only hear a few of his words. Vet should have wrong. Max shrugs, his shoulders droop. He leaves without a word. When George wipes the fingerprints off my glass, his cheeks are wet. He doesn't meet my eyes. The one and only Ivan. When all the humans have left, I send Bob to check on Ruby. How is she, I ask, when she returns. She was shivering, Bob says. I tried to cover her with hay, and I told her not to worry, because you were going to save her. I glare at him. You told her that? You promised Stella? Bob lowers his head. I wanted to make the kid feel better. I shouldn't have made that promise, Bob. I just wanted... I put to Stella's, I point to Stella's domain, and for a moment, it seems like I've forgotten how to breathe. I wanted to make Stella happy, I guess, but I can't save Ruby. I can't even save myself. I flop onto my back. The cement is always cold, but tonight it hurts. Bob leaps onto my belly. You're the one and only Ivan, he says. Mighty Silverback. He licks my chin, and he's not even checking for leftovers. Say it, Bob commands. I look at him. Say it, Ivan. I don't answer. So Bob licks my nose until I can't stand it any longer. 
I am the one and only Ivan, I mutter. And don't you ever forget it, he says. When I gaze at the food court skylight, the moon, Stella, is shrouded in clouds. <laughs>